you Jump, 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 jump What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party This is what we done started Peace and love, party people. It's the BKMC, the MCEO, Talib Kweli. This is the world's best podcast, the People's Party. And as always and as usual, I got my funny and very talented and thought-provoking and beautiful co-host, Jasmine Lee, in a place to be. What's up, Jasmine? Yep, yep. How you feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling like <laughs> saucering and saucering. What? And would it be inappropriate if I put my leg up right now? I don't even know what that word means. I'm wearing really cool pants, guys, and I wish you could see them. Well, and it maybe makes you should have like saved that for the, for the club for the, no. instead of for the podcast. It's a party. People's party. It is. Up here is the people. And down here is the party. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. There we go. Today's guest is, we're going to have a lot of fun with today's guest. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Today's guest started out in production, then decided that, you know what? I'm going to step up. And I'm going to make a name for myself in the comedy world. This guest is a member of a legendary comedy family, but had to cut her teeth and make her name in her own way so that we could respect her in the way that she deserved to be respected. She made her feature film debut in the very underrated dance flick. She was in Fifty Shades of Black. Essence Magazine said that our guest delivers stand-up that should have her on everyone's radar. This guest delivered one of the best comedic performances I've seen in recent memory, and Tiffany Haddish's great show, They Ready. Please give it up. People's Party welcomes the hilarious, the fabulous Shantae Wayans in the house. Woo! What up? I'm good, man. What's How up? you feeling? Oh, good to see you. How you feeling? Good, good, she got good. her COVID protectors. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I ain't had nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. How you feeling? I'm doing well, man. Good to uh, see you. Can I just start off with saying how dope this is to oh, be here uh, and have this opportunity with you, man? Thank you. Um, we want to represent the culture with this show and I feel like what you're doing, what you represent and where you're from and where you're going is absolutely imperative for us to hear your story. So thank you for sitting hey, down Hey, that us. means a lot. Yeah. Yes, yep. indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> What's what? up, homie? What up, Jazz? You know, I'm I thought you was going to be close to me. I, I know, I, I know. thought they knew what I like, Jazz. <laughs> I know, I know. I'll be, I'll, I'll be in here, but I'm not there. Anyway. Uh, People ask questions about that, They're though. like, where, where are you? Yeah, they, they, they say, how come you don't let Jasmine have a seat at the table? Oh, oh. Listen, they say that in they, the comments. They, 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 and, and someone asked me if I was in a different studio. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's Beaming so in live. That's <laughs> Come but, live from my bedroom. It's Jasmine sort of, Lee. It's like you got good lighting. It's functional there because there's, you know, for the production, it's good that jazz is there. There's different things they could do. The, if we were all here, it'd be harder for us to communicate yeah. and, and maybe pivot and do the things we need to do. So that's why it works on a production level to have jazz there. But jazz is always welcome hey, to be at the table. I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> that like, for you. I wasn't in the comments. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, that's not for you. That was just, you know, that was copy. <laughs> no, no, no. No, for sure. All right. I don't up. know. Where, where did we meet? I have no idea. I think we met, man, it was it was before the True TV stuff. It was before the True TV Was series. it Atlanta? I have no idea where we met. Somewhere in the comedy circuit randomly. The first time I worked with you was Laugh, uh, Laugh Mobs, Laugh Tracks. Shout out to them. Gave so many people... Uh, opportunities and we did your job. Jazz was me. She was. She I was, was a stud in a fat suit. <laughs> and it's so funny to see how they try to make a film girl into a stud. <laughs> oh, see, Jazz did that on her own. <laughs> Jazz could have showed so up. So excited she when I found showed up, out. Studded out. <laughs> I, I, I love I love to be studded out, and I wore my typical lesbian flannel because you know that's what I think of I when flannels. I think of. Uh, textbook stud so <laughs> <laughs> it's still real yes still but that real. was one of i mean i think that was a, a lot of people's favorite jokes because it was just it was hilarious john cia was in that as well yeah uh talk about that experience oh man uh well the the funny thing is my friend sh she was a huge fan of me mm -hmm. uh and she would come out when i started doing stand-up mm -hmm. and i did this joke because i got mad and she didn't know it was about her Stop. until <laughs> Her. Until like it got on TV and uh -huh. stuff, but basically the joke was, you know, when you when you get big, you uh -huh. know, I, I still have my my uh, moments where I want to look nice and and you know be told uh, right. accordingly. And she was a big girl, uh -huh. and she had the nerve to tell me that I looked like I was gaining weight. <laughs> and if you could just imagine. Uh -huh. I'm talking about like a biggie coming up to you, <laughs> like yo, Talib, yo, you looking kind of 
chunky right, right there. Right, bro. right, right, right. <laughs> so it was one of those moments. And then, you know, she she was one of those people that was trying to lose weight. Uh-huh. Um, but she would always like have an excuse mm-hmm. as to why she was eating a cheesecake <laughs> or doing whatever, no matter where we was. So right. that was the joke I formulated and she played uh, me and John C. had played her. And that was my first acting debut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, this this might be taboo to talk about. But, like, so Jazz, when I met Jazz, Jazz was definitely gay. Yeah. Right? I'm still, yeah. She's still I still gay. Yeah. love women. Yeah. yeah. Guys, it's gosh, not to, darn it. You know? And I'm like, lesbian I, I man here right now, too. Are you right? No, no, you're right. I said that wrong. I See, I, see I, I'm starting off wrong already. Right. <laughs> starting off, I'm fucking up already. <laughs> so, when I met Jazz... Jazz was jazz. Mm. And Definitely. This, <laughs> gay. And this jazz that I know is gay. Right, right, right. And right. was gay then, still gay, now gonna be gay in the future. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> straight women have sex with women with men. I mean, straight women have sex with women all the time and they keep saying they're straight. They're gay. So why can I not say I had I have sex with you, them? Have, you know, you why know can I have is? a baby and still be gay? Jazz no, but that's man. not even what I was gonna ask. I know. <laughs> but it's it's been obviously let, it's let, been let on my heart. Go, go, go. Go no, but this is the thing because you uh, one of the things I enjoy about your comedy is you talking about masculinity and femininity and and talking about you you know I, when I saw you talking to Sway. You said two weeks. I feel like a, a girl. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks. I feel like a boy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's that's a, that's a very real thing and a courageous thing to express. And mm-hmm. just the, in your comedy, you talk about how you used to be with your boys, and then you grow up, and then you find yourself doing things that you would have never thought. You say you turn into your mom. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so Jazz, when I met her, she definitely didn't want to deal with no dudes, but then something in her, she dealt with this dude and had a baby. Yeah. And so I guess what I'm asking is, is that as a woman, when you are a stud, and I don't even know, I didn't even know if that was the right word for me to say until you said it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I don't even know if I could. If I was about, I, I, That's I, I not derogatory. To no, not Same at all. stud, right? Yeah. But if you have that stud energy, like at at some point, does it be like, well, damn, I want to have a baby now? Yeah, yeah. Which which is uh, pretty much where I'm at. Like mm. I, um, you know, it's funny because my fiance and I uh, are planning to have a baby, but it. initially, um, I was like at a point I wanted to have one mm. myself, honestly, for the experience in itself, because mm-hmm. I think that's a very powerful uh tool to have you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but also i don't think there's an issue with having a baby it's it's nature Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's 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 something that's a beautiful experience so you know and it's it's cheap the way she did it you know what i mean (laughs) like we about to pay about 50k i was trying to save on the bills and she did it the cheap way she was like come on man that's old school jazz you look cute enough for me to give it up to jazz for the old school cheap way (laughs) <laughs> bargain shopper right. uh, any- <laughs> bargain shopper got that but wait, dollar- <laughs> the crazy thing is that I was so definitely gay in my community and my surroundings that a lot of people were obviously shocked when I ended up pregnant and it was during COVID but I got a couple of people in my inbox to my mm, did you do in vitro or did you do insemination I was like I did dick that's what right. I did <laughs> but you know what as I'm listening dick. to y'all talk what yeah. I realize is, is that and this is my own bias, right? As I'm listening to y'all talk, I realized that my question is not even about gay yeah. or straight. My question is about just being a woman, yeah. mm-hmm. regardless yeah. of your orientation. Everybody, um, uh, you could fall in love with anybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's really what it mm-hmm. is. So no, I don't prefer to be with men. No, I don't. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I've been with a guy... Uh, and I've I loved him. I just mm. didn't like anything else that came with it. Right. So I think it's important to be able to have those feelings because you know s- sometimes people put a certain uh, stigma on themselves, yeah. mm-hmm. and especially like young ones trying to find their identity and do these things. Especially being a stud, like you can't even look at a dude or say he's cute because they'd be like, yo. Yo, that's Matt Straight, son. You like, yeah. I, I can't say it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of rules. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a lot of rules on right. if it was me. But for her being mm-hmm. a femme, I mean, they're going to ask questions, but that's just going to pass by. Mm-hmm. And even with, and I had to check myself too, because even when you see masculine presenting women pregnant, you're like, what? what, do you, what, what why do you want to carry the baby? And it's like, you're still a woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You still yeah. get those urges. You still want to, you know, Feel those changes in your body. Yeah, right. it's, it's dope. You like, man, I want to 
<laughs> you want to have a kid and walking around with a wife beat on sometimes don't get you the man to have that baby. So you no. got to figure it out. <laughs> well, speaking of moms, uh, shout out to your mother, Elvira. Oh. And uh... <laughs> I just want you to know my mother is going to fall in love with you even more <laughs> for mentioning her name. Well, absolutely. You know, we have to shout out the moms. Yes, and yes. Um, I've heard you talk about Fulton Projects. Yeah, Chelsea okay. Square. But tell us about that time in your life. Man, I think, you know, I, I, rough, rough upbringing as far as just, you know, the household, um, my mother struggling, you know, my uncles were starting to get some shine, mm -hmm. you know, Keenan was doing Hollywood Shuffle and stuff like that. The beauty about my mother is she always tried to keep us intact in some shape or form. She had to work two, three jobs or figure out what she needed to do to put us in a safer environment. Mm -hmm. She would try to do that, uh, which is one of the reasons why we moved a lot. Okay. But uh, <laughs> and it, it's actually funny because she would move so far down in Jersey. It was like I felt like at the time you're moving me away from our friends mm -hmm. Um and now that I'm older, I'm like, I love being away from everybody. Like, <laughs> right. The further I can move to get in. But um, a lot of struggles, but a lot of love, a lot of uh, learning. And again, we were at the point where uh, my uncle started to get famous. So mm -hmm. we had, you know, we had the moments of being broke, uh, but them showing up to graduation and giving us a car. You okay. know, it's like that's what they could afford right. uh, to, to, <laughs> to splurge on, right. um, you know, up until... Uh, uh, they really blew up with like the living color and stuff. Okay, word. So I knew my father until about seven or eight. I don't remember the time, but he was gone for a long time. And then we just recently reconnected uh, three or so years ago. And for me, it was definitely like, um, it just helped me learn myself. Yeah. You know, I, I figured out where I came from, why I do certain things, why I annoy my mother so much, you know, different <laughs> things like that. So um, you just met your dad recently after not growing up with Look him at, at all. What was that meeting like for you? Oh, it's the people's party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, the crazy thing is... Uh, and let me shout out my brother, too. My mother and my brother, that was really, I missed that part of, of, and, and growing up and stuff like that. But my, my brother was like my father uh, mm -hmm. growing up. And mm -hmm. uh, But I met my dad once when I was little. I used to beg to see my dad because um, I, I had the whole complex of being in school and having one side not really mess with me or call, you know, mm -hmm. you white or whatever the case may be. And for some reason, I just always wanted to uh, meet him. Uh, to know my identity a little bit more. Uh, last time I asked, my mom smacked the hell out of me. Mm. Uh, said, you ever ask me if you white again? I'm going to show you how white. You said if you ever asked me to be white again? How white. No, <laughs> 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 no, nah, no. Nah, nah. But basically, um, so I did get to meet my dad for, uh, when I was like 11. Mm. And he got arrested on the way to meet me. Whoa. Uh, and so that moment was crazy because that was my first time seeing him and it was like a version of me because I look like my mom but my brother looks more so it's like you know the eyes the everything mm. uh cut to before the pandemic um I hit him up out the blue it's, it was one of the things that I felt like was going to be a breakthrough for part of my healing process mm. and uh, I was drinking at the time I remember calling him uh, I don't remember much of the conversation but I remember him crying and just saying how, you know, I just started going to the church and stuff, and I just, I can't believe that I'm talking to you and so forth and so on. And uh, for some reason, I asked him to come out. I didn't know. He hit me up the next day and was like, yo, uh, I got a ticket. Can I come for a week or two? Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, uh, he comes, and I actually vlog it. I just, I haven't put it together because mm. it's so, I, t I told him I was going, I was like, yo, I'm going to ask you, mad like, real questions, and, you know, I need to know. Mm -hmm. And... I'm asking him stuff, why, why'd you deny me? why you leave me? Why, you know, when I did talk to you, you know, I never wanted anything. I just wanted to get to know you and so on and so on. And uh, he answered everything. He answered everything. And I realized that one of, one of the craziest things that we're so alike is uh, sometimes I can only say sorry but once. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do after that. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't prove or show you why I wasn't there and how much I wish I was. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what it is. And so spending those two weeks with him, uh, initially I was nervous because my special just dropped. I thought he was going to want me to spend money and, mm -hmm. you know, buy him mm -hmm. stuff and so forth and so on. 
He came out here. He was like, yo, let's go to Hollywood Boulevard. We got some ice cream and went back to the uh, crib and played Hitman on uh, PS, PS3. <laughs> and we played the whole time uh, mm -hmm. until he left. We beat the game. Wow. But within that, I had real conversation, real talks. My mm. birthday just passed. He baked me my first cake from him. Spelled my name wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but He's still he baked the cake. So okay. It, okay. it was an amazing experience and a, and a huge breakthrough in my healing. Uh, you spoke on you were drinking at the time and you're currently not, correct? Yeah. So um, can you speak about substance abuse in the comedy community? Because this is a huge problem in learning how to cope. For me, uh, when, when I started, you know, doing stand-up, it, was, it wasn't my initial go-to growing up. I was into tech and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's initially what I wanted to do. But I also didn't feel like I had a voice growing up. So when I was... I was kind of forced to move to Cali, stay with my brother. Mm -hmm. And I found comedy uh, being out here, which was like the first the first opening to, yo, people got to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Like I get to say what I want. I get to be what I want to be and have no issues. Uh, the thing was, I was gay. I just came out. Uh, we got this thing called baby gays. So you don't really know. Like I knew I was aggressive. I played ball. I always dressed like a stud. Mm -hmm. But it was finding that style, like, oh, I'm going to walk a hitty. So, you know what right. I mean? Like, this is me. Let me let it be known. But that hindered me in my career. It wasn't mm -hmm. the time, you know, men wanted to see you sexy. People wanted yeah. to mm -hmm. see you dress, you know, more girly. And I've, I was told that a lot in my career and what not to talk about, what not to be. So I say that to say drinking, that really circled within that because here I am looking at my family that started something that a lot of, you know, nobody was doing. Mm -hmm. And they broke that, you know, <laughs> they broke that. And mm -hmm. I wanted to do that. And I, I just kept telling myself, like, yo, if I'm going to change the game, I got to figure out how to change it. If it's not for me, it'll be for the next generation. So with that, the drinking, the the trying to, you know, suppress how I really felt and how, you know, I got gay agents telling me, yo, you need to show some cleavage right. and Stuff like that. Apologies if I'm just talking. No, no, no. <laughs> but, no, um, no, please. But the drinking came from, you know, trying to... It's, 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 the, the industry tries tries to make you what they want you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and learning, like, to be honest, anybody can make you a star. You just need that team that believes mm -hmm. in you. That's really the truth of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... My emotions, me growing up, me holding all that stuff in is a, a big reason of what led me to drinking and having this family and people people using the family to, you know, it's like it's measuring my career with theirs. Mm -hmm. So between that and, and trying to search for who I really was, it got to me and, and liquor was my outlet. What I was thinking as you was as you was talking, thank you for sharing that, by the way. Um, and what I was thinking about when, when you was talking was, imagine I was imagining having to go through all that in my brain, and, and I'm doing comedy clubs where it's a two drink minimum, mm -hmm. yeah, and where they say that they want the audience sourced up so they could laugh more, yeah, and then the comedians are all getting drunk because I've been backstage at a lot of comedy yeah. clubs and it's a, so it's a drinking culture, yeah. Me as an artist, as a as a as an MC. I didn't really drink until I started rapping for a living. Huh. And I realize now, just as a working person, like most working class people all over the world, go to work, nine to five, right. get a drink right. every night, every day. This is like most of us adults are functioning alcoholics. Right. Mm -hmm. Most of us. So it's normalized. So it's so the fact that I, I have been and am a functioning alcoholic right. because of my career it's something that I've never even stopped. Like I've stopped for a couple of weeks, a month or two, but I've never just stopped because maybe around the pandemic I did because yeah. I wasn't going out to the to the spot so much. But the fact that as soon as I walk in the spot, they're handing me a drink. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everybody in the room is drunk. Yeah. And you it, start to feel like you need a drink in order to perform. Yeah. Well, to to perform, but also to be around people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when you when you I like being in my space and I like I like being around people, but my people are people with good vibes. So mm -hmm. if it's not, you know, which has been a lot of my career, I had to learn that if it's if it don't feel good to me, mm -hmm. I don't care what opportunity it possibly could bring. I can't mm -hmm. I can't be in that space. 
for my sanity. Yeah, vibes don't lie. The vibes don't lie. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> being out Shout there and Chaz having to Van be Queen. around people yeah. and chuckle with, hey, can I get a spot? $2? <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, while people are up here like, you know, using the name, they doing all types of stuff mm-hmm. and you out here just struggling. Now, speaking of that name, the Wayne's name, you often speak about how your grandmother is actually the funniest member oh, yeah. of the family. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So tell us why and how. Ah, because my grandma was the start of turning dark comedy into nothing but laughter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My grandma, she 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 made the funny in us, like when we could laugh at funerals, uh-huh. we mm-hmm. could laugh. <laughs> we could laugh through pretty much anything. And my grandma has just always been that honest mm-hmm. and like, you know, she hit you with the eyes when she about to give you that dark comedy. <laughs> well, my Word. grandma don't hold her tongue for anybody. Word. Yeah. Word. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't Them get hurt. Hills. Can't pay for it. All right. Where's my house? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just let me fend for myself. <laughs> Nobody moved. And then the other day... uh Steve was trying to encourage me to do a flip right before we were filming. I was like, as a director, should I be doing this and busting my face open? Yo, I'm, right before yo, we my filmed? ankle was fucked up for a week because we had kid was, for kid to play. Just the other day, you so I was trying to you, practice you, jumping you, over my foot. And I, I, I was, I was trying because I used to be able to do that shit. I was like, I'm at gonna do park. it. Came in with a whole cast. It wasn't a flip. No, I didn't get a cast. I was gonna but jump off of a up. swing at the park. <laughs> you grew up seeing your family everywhere. Yeah, like scary movie and living color. They're staple in culture. What was it like for you growing up as a Wayne's before you made your own path? Um, it, it was gifts and curses, you know. Uh, like I said before, you know, I would come to Cali. We go to Jordan Camp. You know, Jordan knew who we were. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we go do all that, see all premieres and all that stuff, and then I go back home. You know, <laughs> my diamond rings that I got was the brightest thing in the in the crib. You know what I mean? But it was it was a dope experience in the beginning, especially because, you know, you got to see like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, where we came from. Uh, me, my brother, my cousin Craig, we grew up in the same projects that, you know, 10 kids plus my grandparents were already living. So mm-hmm. we started off there and got to see that. And then to see them uh, excelling and do that, it was just it was amazing. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, the the poor side of the Wayans is a funny, funny, funny punchline. <laughs> it, um, it is. And I knew, you know, me as somebody who grew up in New York, the first time I saw them, because, you know, Hollywood Shuffle, stuff like that, I didn't know until I was an adult working in entertainment how deep the Wayans were in certain of those projects. Right. Um, cause they weren't the face of these projects. So yeah. the first time I saw them was, you know, really like when I saw homeboy shopping network, yeah. not only did I know, okay, these are people that came from po- poverty or no poverty, but these are New Yorkers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you know, it was yeah, like, yeah. this is some New York shit. Yeah. A lot of people don't even realize cause they've been in California for so long yeah. that they, they started in New York. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just, some of what you are saying, I could relate to one on a level of, I've been famous for a long time, but I'm a very working class artist. So I've, I've had ups and downs. I've had valleys and peaks. Some years I'm up, some years I'm down. Mm. Now, the blessing is for me as an artist, I can always make my own way, right? So if I'm like, I'm ambitious enough to be like, if I want to take this vacation or buy this, whatever I want to buy, I'll figure out how to get it. Yeah. But I got to go figure out how to get it. Yeah. yeah I don't just have it like that. Yeah. And so I've never been in a position, I haven't been in a position yet where I, I could be like, I bought my mom that big house. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm in my 40s. And now I'm, I'm thinking less about grinding, grinding, grinding. And it's like, okay, I need to figure out how to buy my mom this big house. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's sometimes a difficult thing to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Because with that proximity to all these famous people, people I know with a lot more money than yeah. I have, people who are in my business. Yeah. And um, and that's just difficult for me now. So I can imagine it being difficult for you. It was, I, the thing that's difficult is, as you just said, mm-hmm. you can work, you can get yours. But it's it was... You know, think of social media on a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. You know, I could go do stand up and my uncles just came out of the movie, but I'm working in the shoot department at mm-hmm. Macy's. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so people come in and be like, Shantae, can I get this in the size seven? And I'm putting right. on their shoe and they like, so I saw your uncle last night mm-hmm. in the movie. So what happens is, you know, enough people tell you and they, why are you working here? Why are you doing this? It's mm-hmm. 
you you try to block it out because you're like, yo, you know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of us and five of them mm-hmm. were the ones making money. And uh, as I'm getting into the industry and understanding pay and all that stuff, you sometimes the artist is not the one really making all the money. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like so, it. yeah, you got stuff to take care of you and take you out to Mr. Chow's, but... That's it. <laughs> right. And then right. they got kids and, right. you know, so forth and so on. So I think the difficult thing came in trying to be my own person, mm-hmm. trying to hustle because that's that was me. I was doing lids in the morning mm-hmm. and Macy's at overnight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was, it was just kind of like, damn, why I can't just work and and right. <laughs> be related? It's funny you, you talk about that because you have your jokes about Postmates. And about being a Postmates driver and stuff like that. And then also, like, for me being on this show, my family, <laughs> as th- my, my aunt sent me a cash app request <laughs> for $1,000 <laughs> for my grandmother's birthday. No, there was no conversation. There was no, what yeah. can you, you send? <laughs> I was like, why does she think that I, I see can you on the YouTube? I see Jasmine on the YouTube. She a, got it. <laughs> why does your grandma need a thousand dollars for the casino? Birthday? Oh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, like, and you're talking about the hustle. Like, people don't understand that even before you were thinking about being in the industry, you had to hustle. But even while working up into the industry, you have to hustle. And for you, it was even harder because you didn't get. How was your opportunity and even growing on stage with the Wayans name? And they're expecting you to go on stage and already be hilarious. And I don't right. know how you were when you started comedy. You started, you know, different time than me. But how did, how were you even able to work on your jokes and how like you know process your brain? Oh, the jokes. Th- this is the beautiful thing about me. I like being in certain situations because mm-hmm. it's gonna become a joke. Right. You know what I mean? I I literally got into an argument with my uncle when people argue because, mm-hmm. I mean, families argue. I got mad and thought I was tough. And I was like, I don't need to make a thousand dollars on the road anymore for 15 minutes. I'm going to go do Postmates. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want you to do it? <laughs> no. He, you know, he was like, you ain't got to leave, but we got to an argument. And which, I'm, un- which uncle was it? Marlon. Okay, this of course. This is the one I said farted on me. Shout but- out to Marlon. <laughs> wait. So, wait. Why Why didn't you want to go on road for the, for 15 minutes for $1,000? I was, I was so upset at our argument. <laughs> and I was, I was at my wits. You know, I... And we can't do it's, the argument. It's hard to work with your family. Oh, for I, sure. I, I messed up sometimes, but it's hard to work with your family because they're your boss and your uncle. Mm-hmm. And you a kid, too, at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you dealing with all those things. And y'all go tiff. It, you know, it was a stupid argument, but we argued. And I, you know, I also was at the point of I was getting so tired. The, I'll tell you the truth. The truth, I feel like... If I kept staying with them on the road, they was getting two for one. Mm. So why do I need to book you when you going to be back with your uncles? Mm-hmm. I understand. But shout out to Keenan and your whole family. And I I do think that as much as, you know, I'm, I've, I've seen a bunch of your interviews and people want to talk about them all the time because of, the, you know, just how incredible the work that he did. A lot of people say that when you get on, you're supposed to put your family on. And that's how families are supposed to operate. And I feel like just for me on the outside looking in, I feel like this is a primary example of how to do that. Yeah. And I'm sure there's arguments and ups and downs yeah. and people get upset at each other and all that. But when I look at it, I, I look at the weigh-ins as, as black American royalty. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we don't have monarchy here. We don't have kings and queens and princesses yeah, and yeah. that here but if we did for <laughs> black we, america it would, yeah. it would be them yeah. so definitely shout out they to did, them they did a lot they and i want to shout out to them too um because they did they mm-hmm. and more importantly they was a huge part of of making my comedy mm-hmm. and so you know i love them forever for that they still sometimes i go to them and pitch a premise and i gotta literally go yo i gotta go because mm-hmm. <laughs> i ran out of paper like so many notes it's so many notes that's beautiful so shout out to them for sure that's beautiful just get to knock on your oh uncle man Grace it's a door. whole master class you just like all right when is this shutting down right now my daughter was here i don't know where she's at now she was doing the sticks right there. hey yeah, that's my daughter Diani. making fly a little slate right there yeah she's doing <laughs> she a thing like she's doing a 
lot over there right, with that right, big right. ass board. Yeah. She's nah. taking the little bit we gave her and doing the most with it, which is I'm very proud of her. Now Aww. she is a very talented musician, singer, songwriter, MC. Um, but she's cutting her teeth right now on the production side. Yeah. As you did. That's very so smart. I wanted to see if you had any advice for her. You are really, I'm going to just say that you're in a really dope position because you learning that behind the scenes is just going to help your your creative process as a whole. So you might not have to stay in whatever you don't, but but find, try to, try to dig in a piece of everything that you can right now because you'll find out that there's some things that you'll like more than, you know, you could you could ever imagine it and it'll help. I did the exact same thing. I t- I tell you this, <laughs> I uh, when I d- used to do tech, I moved out here, got into post production. Uh, I was behind the scenes, and I stopped doing that when I found comedy. And during the pandemic, I was able to build um, my own studio, own studio in my in my own in my house because I knew all that back stuff. And honestly, that's what I was thinking when, because I didn't know that you did production before until this. And I'm like, oh, because House Arrest, which, you know, is her her no, um, comedy. comedy show. I got to do some time on there. Thank you. When I got there, it is literally, you got multiple TV screens and you come in and it's not like a regular Zoom show where you don't know, like you can see how you look, but then you also can see and feel the laughter. So it like makes you feel like you're actually in a club. Right. And actually I did your show right before I filmed my mini special and I was mm-hmm. able to run my full 15 minutes for your nice. guest. Nice. Thank you again. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. And since <laughs> since we're on it, you also gave me my first opportunity in an actual New York club because I've done like, <laughs> I produced my own shows around New York, but at Gotham, when you had your show oh, yeah. and I slid in your DMs, I was like, yo, Shantae, <laughs> let me just come and, and, and do your show. And I thought I was just going to get I'm a few minutes. I saw a rainbow flag on your page. Yeah. I, I, listen, I, fl- I flew out there and I did the show and it was, it, her fan base was perfect for me. So yeah, I was good. like, yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Ja- you you always got, you so bubbly and I know you probably go through things, but you always just seem so inviting and welcoming. And I appreciate that energy. So well, that's why we have Jasmine here. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't just a smile. It ain't just a smile. <laughs> um, shout out to Damian Dante. Hey, brother. Um, that's my old school player <laughs> partner. You know what I'm saying? He 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 never ages. He looks the same age as no, he did. He does. But I used to that that was a guy that when I, I used to live here in Los Angeles, I used to party here in Los Angeles. That <laughs> was my you? guy. <laughs> that was that was my partner. That I would meet in the VIP at whatever was yeah. popping, and we used to get it in. That was a party animal that fucking guy and he directed dance flick yeah right i guess that's when he got more serious yeah and um (laughs) (laughs) um, man i love dance flick me too i think it's really underrated and it's written by keenan sean marlon and craig right yeah yeah um was it on purpose to give sort of the next generation wayne's a Those look. Batons. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to, uh, well, we, <laughs> they, <laughs> I think they were trying to definitely pass the torch. Damien's mm-hmm. always been passionate about directing and, mm-hmm. and, and creating that. And then to have like little Damon. Yeah. Um, shout out to Damon. And, and stuff. Yeah. David cause Jr. that was, that was the break mm-hmm. for him and, um, mm-hmm. little D. So definitely it was, it was a beginning of a torch passing. Word up. Yeah. Yeah. It I looked like, like a fun movie. movie. It was. Yeah. David on uh, Oh yeah. He's amazing. God. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the best. For those who don't know, you are also a rap star yourself. Ah, oh, come on now, and, you know. Uh, <laughs> you have the, <laughs> watch out, fifty. You did have the. Uh, you did have the watch rap out, parody. 50. Get the strap. Oh, I said that because I did it. Oh, parody. I know, I know. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, it was. It was a. She's a rap star. No, it's very good. Get, said, get oh, the listen, strap. Which for those, very good. This is what I hear Go get about the mentioning strap. it because I, I gotta give props to the other dude now. Uh, shout out to Doughboy. Oh, Doughboy. Because <laughs> Doughboy, I, nah, Doughboy wrote it. So. So, okay. Oh, but it says written by Doughboy in the. Um, I know, but you know, when people listening to here, they be like, "Where is she rapping?" I gotta be like, "Yeah, Doughboy." They are gonna be in the writer. comment section like, "She a ghostwriter." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Doughboy she, probably would say that, but uh, it doesn't matter because anybody, not everybody, could have rapped it. And for those people, it's not talking about a gun. It, <laughs> it's a Thank you, Jasmine, weapon. for explaining <laughs> the joke. <laughs> Um, but anyway, we're a rap show that interviews a lot of rappers and comedians. What do you think the rapper comedian connection is? The word strap. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> go get the strap. That whole so yeah, that's it. He said it. <laughs> that's her. That's her answer. I'm going. I'm going with strap. <laughs> I'm going with strap. <laughs> well, I think I always say that comedians and rappers. Are, I mean, we live kind of the same lifestyle. And that's what I, the more rappers that we interview, cause like to be a comedian, you have to have a bold personality. You have to know that you're that deal. You have to pretty much feel like you're the god or queen or king that's of the not, stage. That's not true. It is. That's not true because I know a lot of corny comedians who about actually corny. get a lot of buzzing right now cause they corny. <laughs> they, <laughs> but they still, that's their, that's their character. They still know when they get on stage that I'm about to dominate this stage. That's what I mean. Like oh. not, not like your lifestyle. I mean, like your mindset and the rappers that we talk to and they're always like, yeah, well, I was the God of this or I was the best of that. And that's where the connection that I see. I I, I see a connection with that. I do think comedians are probably more emotional. Oh, I I feel like it's and no disrespect, but I feel like it's it would be easier to be a rapper. And that could be for me being on the other side. But I think about people doing covers or putting stuff on YouTube and all those things. No, I agree that because a comedian, you have to live the type of life. Like, I wanted to be an actor. I went to acting school. I went to Tisch School of the Arts at New York University. I was serious with my shit. I studied Stella <laughs> Adler and the whole shit. <laughs> Lee Strasberg. Give me your best line. <laughs> <laughs> Stella! Stella! <laughs> Stella! <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I got that from Das FX. Das FX song. <laughs> Because I ended up being a rapper. so. Um, but, you know, what I realized when I was going to in college is that I was like, okay, my life... And I was in the hip-hop scene. I had a foot deep because I was working at the clubs doing promotions. And I'm like, yo, chances are that I'm going to be a waiter for the rest of my life. Oh, no. Well, no, waiters make good money. Yeah, they but do. go Depending on. Depending where you go. But I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I, I trust y'all. <laughs> I just didn't want to shit on my waiters, y'all. No, but I'm not shitting on waiters. That just wasn't my dream. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had other dreams. (laughs) And maybe that's just where I I put my focus, right? Because now as an adult, I'm like, I totally could have did that. But I think at that point in my life where I I had a foot deep in the hip-hop world. Like, I was already at the nightclubs with Diddy, with Heavy D, with Biggie, seeing these people. I was friends with Supernatural. I was already in it. So I was like, John Forte was starting to crack. So I was like, okay, this looks like more like I could do this, yeah. you know? And I feel like with comedians, they go into it knowing just like, it's even it's even worse with that shit. It's like, yeah. yo, I, this is a life of pain and hard times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're on stage actually talking about your life experience. Like, like comedians, like that show Crashing. Yeah. Right? Which I, I recognize things from that show that I've seen in comedy clubs. Yeah. And the whole thing about you having to pay to get on stage. Like, oh, yeah. Rappers, you know, ain't r- real rappers, I guess they do that now. I guess they do that now. I guess, I guess niggas do that now, huh? That's fucking, <laughs> well, that's that's fucking that sad. Here. Check your privilege, that's fucking fellas. Sad, Check yo. your privilege. No, that's why well, now I, I think about it. Rappers do that. Business, yeah. Rappers do that now. Rappers pay to get on open mics. But when I was coming up, you nah, you didn't pay to get on an open yeah, mic. Nah. Not back in the day. Well, I've paid a, a lot of monies to get on open mics. Which is something you do in comedy when you starting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say part of the biggest connection is that no matter what you're going through in life, mm-hmm. you got to get on stage and perform. That, that the fucking That's, truth. And your performance or whatever you're going through in life, you have to put into your performance. You got to put into your performance. Yeah. But comedians, the the hard thing for me is that comedians, I did my special and then I went somewhere and people was like, you could just do your whole special again. Mm-hmm. And I was tripping because I'm like, what am I going to talk about mm-hmm. for 30 minutes? Because I just gave <laughs> yeah, all this material right. and they was like, just do the same thing. And I was like, M possible the mm-hmm. jokes even as a comedian even if it did fly it still wouldn't hit as hard as yeah, it would if it was fresh but musicians they always want to hear your favorite i, I saw you before mm-hmm. covid <laughs> at, at, in downtown you okay. performed with uh it was like macy grace and stuff okay and when you came out and say <laughs> um i i'm not even gonna mess it up or try to sing it um <laughs> but but it it's the feeling of like, yo, that's my ish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody I, I, wanna say, run run that, get the strap back. Yeah. Joke. <laughs> they will though. I mean, yeah, but you know, comedians, comedians get handicapped by that, whereas musicians that because like I can't ever hate on Get By. 
or the blast or any song that people like. I can't hate on it. As much as I might get annoyed having to do it over and over again, I can never say I don't like it or I get annoyed by it. Right. I will never, I will never. Because people connect that with an emotion and a memory and a time in their life. And people, that's what music is for, to play back. With jokes, you know, even with Chappelle, like that's what ran him to Africa. Yeah. Motherfuckers in the audience like, Rick James, bitch. Yeah, and like, yeah, come on, yeah. come on. But that's a character, though. Mm -hmm. That's a character. And, yeah. And, and, but even and, the punchlines. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. sure if you have little, little bits that people... No, 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 you're right. It, it, takes, it takes a certain thing to get there, though. Yeah. It, and I think that's what I'm saying. I think in your early career as a comedian, it might hit different than, yeah. you know, a musician in their early career. I think also the um, the punchline, the fact that we're looking, we're, we're th comedians and MCs are thinking in like couplets or oh, thinking yes. in, well, for MCs it's couplets, for comedians it's threes. Yeah. You know, we're thinking in these, how do we get to this punchline? Yeah. Punchline, punchline, punchline. How do we get to set up punchline, set up yes. punchline. Our brains are thinking like that. Set up punchline and if this doesn't work, uh, how, do how do I, I come back? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How do I find another three? What are you about to say? Well, it's... Uh... It's a little whatever heavy, but it's a question for both of you guys because you were talking about how as a comedian and as a rapper, you have to perform no matter what happens in your life, right? So mm -hmm. our friend Fu, rest in peace, he yeah. passed. He passed, I found out he passed 15 minutes before I did Jeff Ross's show, mm -hmm. which was one of my bigger shows. Yeah. And so it really fucked with my head and I didn't give my full performance, even though I had a little talk with myself and I'm like, Fukan would have been cursing me out, like, get your ass up there and, yeah. and figure your shit out. Mm -hmm. But it was very hard for me. And how how do you... Well, for me, um, was it Tommy Davis? had Tommy Davis in here yesterday. Yeah. And he was talking about Richard Pryor, him having to go on before Richard Pryor and in between Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. And he talked about Richard Pryor's uh, wife showed up and his mistress was there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they started fighting in the parking lot. He went in the parking lot. I was talking to both of them and came there and just told the argument on stage. But did it Richard Pryor doing it though? Mm -hmm. And he said that what he did in that moment, it just was like, yo, that's that's what it is. Yeah. And for me, as rappers, we have more of a of a cloak of armor. We don't shed armor. Our, uh, we don't shed on stage like that, like comedians mm -hmm, do. Yeah. But when we do do it, it's better. And you, it's, <laughs> it, it, it is. <laughs> what you just said about, as you said, I saw you pre-COVID. It hit me like a ton of bricks because the pandemic was hard for me because my whole life was on the road. And then the road was taken from me and it was like a muscle. And my muscle memory wasn't there. When I get back on stage, I couldn't remember any of the rhymes. Mm. So you say that people come here to hear the rhymes. Imagine you can't do them. Right. I'm like, yo, I got a show in a couple of days and I don't even know these songs because I wasn't really present. I was performing 200 nights a, a, a year. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was, it was just muscle memory. Yeah. I'd be on stage, think about what I'm going to order in the hotel, what movie I'm going to watch, yeah. what city like I'm going to be sex. in tomorrow, stuff like that. But I'm just, I'm, and I'm so good at it yeah. that I'm getting standing ovations and they encore and they call on my name. Yeah. So there's no need to switch that behavior because yeah. I'm being rewarded for it. But then, like, when I get off the road and I go a year without being on stage to do my whole set, even when I was out in Ohio with Dave and them, they was doing shows in a cornfield. Yeah. And they would say, sometimes they would say, do get by, come out here and do it. And I'm like, nah, because I can't even access the words right now. I didn't tell them that at the yeah. time. Yeah. I just was embarrassed. Yeah. And like, is this the end of Talib Kweli? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which I, you know, this is, this is the real shit I was going yeah. through at the time. And when I got back on stage at the Blue Note, which it was a mistake for me to book three nights at the Blue Note, two shows a night for my first time back. It was a lot. <laughs> because I had, yo, I was fucked up. I had to lay down for a week after that because I just, my body before that, I was doing 200 shows a year. So I could, I could perform at that pace and it was nothing. Yeah. Smoke a blunt, drink all night, perform, get up, do whatever I got to do. Yeah. Run a label, fly out here, film this podcast, fly to London, do a show. That's how I was moving. So, I get on stage at the Blue Note after rehearsing with my band for a couple of days just so I can know the words. And I was shaking. And I told the audience, I was like, yo, I'm I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to pull this off. Yeah. If I skip the words, I need y'all to fill in. And then what happened, what, what, what happened was, as I'm telling, as I'm talking to the audience and being honest with them about what I'm going through, I'm hitting punchlines mm -hmm. and I'm being funny. Because I spent the summer with all these watching all these comedians the whole time. Yes. So I picked up 
a sort of stand-up skill in my in between song and banter that I realized, oh, this is working. Yeah. And now I got the I got the jazz club cracking the fuck up. Yeah. And then Bismarcky had just passed away. So I and I got a band. So I told my band, play just a friend and play these Bismarcky shit. Now I'm freestyling. Yeah. Which yeah. I had I don't usually freestyle on stage, but now I'm freestyling. Now I'm doing Bismarcky songs that I even remember I'm accessing them. Yeah. But that sh- that whole shit was scary to me. Damn, that was that was deep. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, the 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 crazy thing is in the same since the pandemic hit, uh, so food passed. Mm-hmm. But right before food passed, my best friend Nick Carthen passed. Rest in peace. And this was so I went and buried my best friend in New York. The next day was going to the repass, mm-hmm. and on the way to the repass, got the call that food passed. Mm-hmm. So I say all that to say that week. Now, mind you, before the pandemic, my special drop was out there about to pitch a show. Mm -hmm. They told me to hold off. We had two years because they kept going, I don't know if you want to go pitch it to the network right now. Too much stuff is moving. So I said, damn, best friends die. I'm about to go pitch a show. That following week, they called me and they're like, yo, uh, (laughs) do you want to postpone it? And I, I said no, and I'll tell you why. Like, so this this is how I think, and this is how I still put on. Mm-hmm. In the deck, I'm pitching Fu Quan's name is one of the characters. Mm. Nick was the face of Fu. Mm. So as I'm pitching, I got to see the name and my best friend while I'm pitching this show, mm. and this shit just happened. They go, do you want to not do it? And I said no, because if I do I said, I think they're going to help me sell the show. I'll just say that to say right now we... Talking things out. Yeah. So, but but that's yeah. that's where I take that death and and having to put on because if I would have waited and mourned without you know what I mean and got that release out, I wouldn't have mm-hmm. had that same passion and pitching it. Yes, indeed. Right. Yes, indeed. Now, um, I do a lot of social justice work and I try to align myself with the activists on the ground at all times. And in my experience, people from the black community show up. All the time, straight black people, gay black people. But in my experience, it's gay black women that more often than not are on the front lines of these conversations and these struggles. Now, you are triple marginalized. You're a gay woman, a black woman, a woman woman. Um, <laughs> how has that unique viewpoint impacted your comedy? Ah, uh, Dang. That wasn't on the paper. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I did, I, uh, no, the, the, the impact for me, I think, is just I, I embrace it. I embrace it, and I'm, I'm also able to look at all sides of it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's powerful. Mm-hmm. It's powerful, and I, I just say I embrace it. I embrace it. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Dave Chappelle told me... Uh, you're a gay black woman. You can say anything you want, so don't keep it like so. So you do it. <laughs> no, nah, I think I think it depends what kind of gay. That's why I, that's why I say I just embrace all sides. I know what it is, but I still I also have the side of understanding the man thought. So you know, I got the female versus male. Um, you know, I don't all, all other sides because I am black first. You know, I know that I had to deal with that growing up before anything, and I mm-hmm. understand that. You know, being gay hasn't really helped me in a lot of things. It helped me get pussy more, but it didn't. You know what I mean? Like it didn't really uh, advance me uh-huh. in any type of way or protect me more from being black. Um, mm-hmm. But they're all different struggles in their own, and that's why I said I just embraced them and made me more powerful because I was able to do that. Bravo. So Damon said that Dave Chappelle freed the slaves with his closer <laughs> special. So as we all know, there's a lot of debates going around uh, without <laughs> risking getting yourself canceled. How did you feel about the closer? I'm not gonna get canceled. Um, I I liked it. Um, I you know I I say this. I I don't mind what he talks about. I didn't feel offended. Um, I think we are living in a real interesting time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are certain fights that are happening where mm-hmm. I feel like, who are these board members speaking for us? Um, but I found right. it funny, and I also got the message mm-hmm. that he put out there. You That's know what amazing. I'm saying? And we could fix this. I think, you know, I think how we could fix this is get a nice <laughs> ring. And get Dave Chappelle <laughs> in the back. Get, get a drag. Oh yeah. <laughs> before transition to get in the same ring 
Have you ever seen a gay man in heels swing? Listen, what I... Oh. Tasha Bell get his ass this is this is this is my problem. <laughs> this is my 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 qualm with the gay community. Well, the LGBT community. It's still ran by white males. You know, yeah. so as far as lesbians, you don't have like a real say so in things. There's not like that many lesbian activities or lesbian invited things. And then also as a black lesbian, there's not activities that are like black lesbian or like come let me hug you in. And then like in the LGBT, it's still ran by the black, the the gay white men, and then the pre or at post transition white men. To me, my opinion is not all like it, it's still a lot of racism. Yeah, I in, think that's in, what in, I'm. In I think what you're saying is what Dave was saying in his special. But I think the problem is, and this is my opinion, is that um, his special. I think to get his special, I think you have to a be a fan of comedy. Oh, for sure. And B, be someone who understands black culture mm -hmm. and our codes and the way in which we speak. You know, because Dave Chappelle has been calling black women bitches and black men niggas for his whole career. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And nobody had an issue. They was giving him the Mark Twain Award. Right. You know? And so it's just, what that's the point that he was making. But he was doing it in language that people consider crude and not academic, which, well, why should comedy be academic? Why should comedy meet right. academic rigor? And No, no, no. And he should be able to talk about what he wants to talk about. I say the if, if I was going to pinpoint anything, I would go, I think it became such an issue because he talked about it in a lot of special. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was some was... people feel, you know what I'm saying, yeah, in, yeah. in that way. But, you know, when when you think about it, I, I remember we were just watching uh, Raw, mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy. And that go hard. That go hard. F word and the woo. -woo. Yeah, he's, that go hard. But it's, it, it was Listening to that in 2021. Funny. And like Delirious a, go harder than Raw. I, I, yeah. I already know. Yeah. But what I do think that The Closer did for comedians it was, it reminded you that you have a choice. So it freed the slaves. It freed the slaves, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. But the no, but thing is that, but seriously, because it's like, you can be canceled uh -huh. if you have, if you want to do your own, your own route. You know yeah, I mean, saying? Chappelle don't have to do the he, big budget movies. He doesn't movies. have to, exactly. Yeah, he can just do his special. But, but that's special. in anything. Yeah. You, you, you make your mark, you make a stand, and the people who going to ride with you, they're going to ride with you. Not everybody is going to enjoy your stuff. I got I got hard dudes coming to my show that mm -hmm. show a lot of love, and then I got ones that sit right in the front, you know, mm -hmm. waiting, for, <laughs> waiting for a titty to bump. <laughs> but, but, with, but with them titties, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, how they looking at me. But, Word. You know, everybody's not going to be for you. And I think if you take away what you really want to talk about, you're going to lose the mm -hmm. love of what you've been so, so passionate about. And it's it's not going to come off right. You might as well quit. Yeah. Right. I'm going to say this, and I don't know if we're going to keep this, because... <laughs> That's like been a, our, I'm just putting that out there before that's I say That's been context it. for a lot of our yeah, conversations yeah, yeah. lately. Yeah because, yeah, because we know we, we do this. We've been doing it a lot now, so we know... We know how to edit. Right, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. Like, but what you just said is how I feel. And forgive me for anybody who, um, you know, is how I feel about the conversation around vaccination and yeah. this pandemic. Because look, I am someone who's, I don't judge anybody. My body, my choice, right? Yeah. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you feel like makes sense for your body, your your risk versus your reward right. and your life, what you ever have to do, right. right? But my whole thing is like, if you are someone who is like, I'm not going to get vaccinated, then you have to, then what you're saying is, is that I'm taking a moral position. Yeah. I'm taking a principled stand. And so when I see people getting very upset about this, I'm like, well, nigga, welcome to the club. Right. Because as an artist, I've been taking a principled stand my, to right. my whole career and it's been very difficult. Right. Because taking a principled stand means you lose a lot of privileges. Right. You lose a lot of access. Right. You lose a lot of props. You lose a lot of you know, there's a lot of places you can't go. Yeah. So if you're going to take that principal stand, then I'm with you. Yeah. But then yeah. get on your Dr. Sebi and, and right. go grow your own food. <laughs> right. And exactly. don't pay your tax, become a more. Right. Do what right. you got to do. Right. Right. But don't be like, I'm trying to go to the club. Exactly. And, or don't or, get the or even worse, I'm trying, I'm a cop. Or or I'm a, or I work at the hospital. Right. And I'm right. taking this principal stand against my boss. Right. But but I want to still have the the freedom to work here. Exactly. Nah, this just is such a start a your own hospital. 
topic. I know, which is why we're probably going to cut it out. Just edit. And I, we're and not gonna, I said, I'm just saying that for the room. No, no, no. But yeah. if we go edit out, I and because a lot of it is mm-hmm. we're, we're, gonna, we're crossing in it. Mm-hmm. The, the messed up thing is... It feel like even if somebody wanted to go open up a grocery store or something like that of mm-hmm. themselves that they want to take unvaccinated people out of, mm-hmm. it'll uh, they'll still find a way to mandate or or make that not go. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I think it's a bigger picture when you go. You could just go do this and do that when it's already hard to try to start your own stuff. Yeah. Um. And I and I re, I respect what you're saying and and I do think everybody should have their own rights Mm -hmm. and that goes in with anything with artistry with the vax with the it's just a scary thing to not know something for sure Mm -hmm. and have to feel like you can't live anymore without getting this which is why i don't judge anybody for it and that's why i said what my position is really to be fair one of my own ego right because it it is (laughs) because it's like yo i've been i've been out here being principled the whole time, yeah, like this is what yeah, it means. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is what it means. It's yeah. just it's hard. This is why people don't. This is why people don't do it. Yeah. But now people are now, like you said, now people are having. We're living in a world where people live, we're living in a world where we're looking at things that we don't know, right? And that we've never seen before, right? So I can't judge anybody for being like I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying I, I get it's, it. It's scary. I just think everybody should really mind their business. And yeah. Stop, stop asking. Stop shaming somebody <laughs> right. or not. We can all agree on that. Like you know huh. what I'm saying, like. I don't give a shit what you are. I am. And if you come over my house and ask you to wear a mask, you either wear one or you stay home. That's right, just right, it. Right, right, Don't come over. Right, word but up. I, and I, I'll just say, to add on to what you said, I respect artists like you so much more. It's 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 what I want my thing to be mm-hmm. and hold that principle because I'm sure, I, I hope that your life has been more fulfilled being that way. It absolutely has. And it has been rewarding. Mm. You know, it it has been rewarding in its own way, but it's it's not easy. Yeah. And it shouldn't be easy. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing, right? I made an album called Beautiful Struggle. Yeah. Because that's really what the core of it is. It's like this thing that we're doing is beautiful, you know, but it's it's the hard path. It's right. the road less traveled. Yeah. You know, you have a friendship with Tiffany Haddish. I do. Wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. She just had a birthday. Yeah, yeah, she was turning up. Um, <laughs> she you, off ships and oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she was doing it big. You properly, properly killed on They Ready. Yes. Thank like, you. that was a proper kill. Thank you. That was like oh, LL Cool J <laughs> stomp you like a jelly bean. Season kill. one, episode six. Sorry, yeah, those residuals. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> did you say? Oh, you do season one episode six, guys. Yeah. Oh, that was a bad wink. Nah. But I feel like that performance catapulted you. Okay. I feel like people knew, but that was like, oh, okay. Like, did your life change after that? It did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did. It did a lot. Um, unfortunately, it only changed for a little bit because then COVID hit. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> COVID was like, yeah, you got what you wanted. Now take it away. Uh, but, you know, it, it got me on, you know, the Breakfast Club, Sway, mm-hmm. Oak Sway, I'm calling him that. Right. Um, but it, it got me in, in that reach in the eyes of, of more people. It got me in the, in the rooms, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, to pitch these shows mm-hmm. and... Um, gave me a little bit more respect just in on this road life. Yeah, that designated way for crime joke oh, man. is amazing. <laughs> it's I damn near jumped on my chair the first time you said that. It's, it's real talk, though. <laughs> so have you and your uncle patched things up? Are y'all y'all good now? Oh no, we are. He's just so aggy because every time I see it, he'd be like, I ain't mean to fart, me. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw him in Vegas and he'd be like, knees. <laughs> I just saw him in uh, Atlanta and he, he doesn't know me. Uh-huh. I've, I've been adjacent to him mm-hmm. around Jeff a lot, a couple of times, but he still like was speaking to me and gave me a hug. Oh, like no, he knew me, sweetheart. and he said that whenever he finishes filming in Atlanta, that you know you already know that he'd love to be here. I mean, he's one of my favorite people. Yeah, me and him around the time when I was hanging out with Damien, I was hanging out with Marlon a lot too. <laughs> I've oh man, I've I've hung out with Marlon is crazy. Yeah, indeed. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was in Ohio with us, and in the ad for Midnight Miracle, my podcast with David, him, mm-hmm. he's in the ad, acting in the ad with us. Yeah, man, I love Haunted House. <laughs> That shit, <laughs> that shit is amazing. He's so crazy. Um, you call your 
tw- your Zoom thing to House Arrest Tour because you love being inside the house, right? Ho- house Arrest Virtual uh, Comedy Store. But that that's because that's what we felt like. It was mm-hmm. all these restrictions. You couldn't go mm-hmm. out unless you did this or do that. Pretty much what House Arrest is uh, mm-hmm. here have been on it. Um, when you were in The Breakfast Club, which you just mentioned, you said... Everything that is happening to you now is a result of you learning how to change your patterns. Yeah. That spoke volumes to me. I feel like that is a cheat code to life. Yeah, I think I think um when you can look at look back on mistakes, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I made a lot of them. Uh when you mistakes. Mi- I've made it. <laughs> we got. I'm turning him into a singer, y'all. Y'all, y'all know what's happening. Um, but a, a big part of my life mm-hmm. has been. It's it's when you got struggle, when you got mm-hmm. survival moments. Um, all those things have made me. Ha, have made me sit back and see uh, the person I became because of it. Mm. I studied something at one point in my life that talked about. Uh, it's gonna be weird, but Dianetics and L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. I, but... <laughs> I, 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 I say this. I don't yeah. want. I'm, I'm not gonna speak on anything about it for what it was in mm-hmm. the moment. Mm-hmm. Talking about Dianetics was part of a change in my okay. my thought process because it talked about uh, certain things that happen in the beginning of your life that could mm-hmm. affect you without you even knowing when you get older. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what I took from it. Okay, yeah. We take from everything that we read, <laughs> right, we take what we right, like. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and so that was a big part mm. of what that was. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I um, that has been true for me as well. You change your patterns, you change your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I'll, I'll segue into this, but during the pandemic, um, you know, I, I was drinking and so forth and so on, and with all the stuff happening with the George Floyds and mm-hmm. Breonna Taylor, everything that was going on, I was drinking to the point where uh, I was throwing up. Mm. I was I was bleeding out my nose. Mm. I could feel my organs swelling up. Mm. I threw up in my sleep and woke mm. up, still here, right? And I'm seeing all these people die, and I kept going, how selfish are you that you keep ki- trying to kill yourself every day? Mm. And you still here, and all these people are just losing their lives. It was a bit a pivotal moment because people go, "How did you stop drinking?" And uh, it, it was because I got mm. to wake up another day and and see all that. Um, I say that because I'm a segue into <laughs> you know one of the reasons why I came yeah. up with live better. Every day is a fresh start. Was that reason for that reason? I was able to get up and change something that I didn't like about me. You know that was holding me back uh, the next day. So that's beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing. And I and I actually got you know <laughs> what you got. I actually got some, you got something for you, you to got to hold on to to the little oh, live yeah. better moment. I love that. Yeah, like how I did. That. I thought you was about <laughs> yeah. to say hypnotherapy. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, because the last couple of guests we had on like uh, hypnotherapy. No, not. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, oh my goodness. It's, so Jazz got the the red sweater. Oh, what? I got gifts too. No one ever brings me gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, Give I'll me my red, red sweater. No, 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 right no, no, now, no. I had left. We got two hats wait, though. Wait, I got I, two hats. I don't know if you heard, but I like to wear hats. It's the oh, you do? The I got you. Yeah, I got you. That's what they. That's what all the cool kids say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really, you welcome, I really man. appreciate this. No, no, no. And just just to have something to you know to just remember, it's it's, it's oh, something that was very real for me. It, it helped me stop drinking, and, and this was something that I wore uh, for a minute just to remind myself of that. Thank it feels you, so I appreciate soft it. And cuddly, just like yeah. their outfit. <laughs> no, 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 I love what I have. Tell look at stuff oh, all the time. And, and comfy. You saw me and, hugging and, it. Right? <laughs> I look at stuff all the time. I never get anything. That so is thank true. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. I get more stuff to Jack. <laughs> yes. So, finally, right? I think we're, mm-hmm. we're here. We What's next? Well, <laughs> I, I like, like how you condensed that question yeah, into two I was like, words. Uh, you gonna ask me so? Uh, so you know what's who, next? Who, who yeah, what's next Wayans? for Shantae Wayans? Ah, <laughs> uh, what's next for Shantae Wayans? Um, so I'm on this tour now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hitting Tacoma, uh, Washington at mm-hmm. Super Funny Nate Jackson's comedy yes, club. Yes, Nate Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, building. I actually have a show out called Drive by Jokes. Um, and a podcast, Menace of Sobriety, uh, which was his dope boy. It's the most L.A. shit I've heard. What, yes. Menace of Sobriety? No, both of that shit. Drive by jokes and Menace of Sobriety. <laughs> 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 it's, 
It's dope though, man. <laughs> it's dope <content. laughs> But that's what I'm doing. You ever doing. seen that 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 walk by on the internet, the meme when the niggas like, oh, I'm about to kill him with this leather niggas. That ain't leather nigga. No. You ain't never seen that one? <laughs> you that guy? No, I'm said? not that guy. I'm gonna pull that up. Somebody pull it up on their phone for sound, me. Sound phone. like LA. Yeah, pull that up. That's this is a true okay. New Yorker right here. I was like this for a long time. <laughs> put up, put type in that ain't leather. We're nigga. not doing a podcast, guys. Let's just look at the move. Let's no, I'm gonna show I got to show it to you. <laughs> Try walking by jokes. Yes, walking by. But yes, I'm we are so glad back. that you came to sit with us. Thank you. And um, yeah, man, People's Party. It, I'm going to play it after it? we're done with the outro. <laughs> People's Party welcomes Shantae Wayne. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. <laughs>